Welcome back everybody. Uh, just gonna go over some stuff that I've had a lot of request for over the, the last year here actually um, and in person so anybody that met me in person uh, that's been asking for it. I'm gonna go over my boat build for everybody. So if you're looking to start out fishing in a boat and say it's your first boat you want to get, I'm just trying to help everybody understand that you do not have to spend twenty thousand dollars on a boat right away um although i'm not even gonna lie if i could get a boat like that i would <laughs> but that's just because i've been fishing for a long time and it would be a nice upgrade to be able to get out on bigger waters but for now i have a 14 foot miro craft i think it's an 80s boat it's an aluminum boat um the nicest part about it, it's got a deep v you'll see um and I'm going to go over kind of how I put things together and how I went by buying the things for it because by no means did I have any money to start with basically and what I did is uh, I, I've taught a couple of my friends to do this like if you want to build something um, like a buddy of mine builds his BMX bikes this way now and it works out perfectly so say you have something about $1,500 you want to build it sounds like it's really hard to just go spend $1,500 on something but if you take and you buy one part at a time like I went and found, I very specifically found this boat because I wanted this exact deep V and the way the seating and everything in it was. And I found it for, I think, 450 or, it was like 550 bucks. So that was the biggest chunk of change that I had to come up with was 550 bucks. So I saved up my money and I found that boat and I started with that. So we'll go from there and I'll start in on the basics. Okay guys, so I'm doing this in the garage that is in my place that I'm renting. Uh, that's why I look like a basement, but it's just a really old garage. Um, so I'm gonna go into detail, but the basics that this one I'm gonna describe to you is, this is your casting deck, obviously, front mounted chair, which is permanent, uh, and then your, your main flooring all the way throughout, and then um, the kind of graph I use the motor obviously the, the size mainly because that one doesn't obviously say what it is and then how i built those so let's get started okay so first off this is a 14 foot miro craft deep v so with the deep v's so you'll see boats they have one two three of these uh ribs this one has the four so i think it's called the deep fisherman i believe that's the model of it um, as you can see, these are the the ribs starting here, but this floor is flat and suspended, so like it it technically keeps going down there, and it, it doesn't really flatten out until you get all the way back here. You can actually see where the the main keel line is on the whole thing. Um, the first thing I'll go into detail is the casting deck, because you might not care about this floor being there, but I know a lot of people that like to bass fish and have a little bit more control. We'll go over that. Okay, now that I'm in the boat, you'll have a better idea of what I did here. So, that is the front seat. So this is technically a three-seater. So normally it would have three seats in it. And when I bought it, it had one mounted up there. As you can see, he had it drilled in right here. And he just had like a normal seat sitting on there. I took that off had the same thing mounted back there I took that off this is a removable seat so if I want to I can just have benches in here which gives you a little bit more room but comfort is key <laughs> so but the the casting deck that I was talking about here so in order to get this to fit as tightly as I did as you can see like that's uh that's part of the anchor winch rope system that goes back by me so Technically, this is a one-man band. Uh, you can really take care of it yourself here. Um, in order to, to get it to fit that close, I used a little trick that a lot of people uh, that fabricate stuff do, and that was I went and got a huge piece of cardboard. I, I believe it was like a, a fridge box that I cut open because it, it's pretty wide across here. I think it's like 50 inches or 56 inches or something like that. So you have to have something big enough to cover this whole area. And then what I did is I cut it down until it fit exactly. 
So the cardboard got cut down and I traced that cardboard out over a piece of plywood. So I whatever it is, the, the plywood is exactly that width. And that's where I measured it back to. So it actually it overhangs just a little bit over the side of this, which is fine. I don't mind that little overhang. You can't really break it off, bend it. Plus it gives you shin something a little softer to do or run into. So Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple of the technical things and try and describe this to you guys as best as I can after showing you that uh, I used a cardboard piece to cut that out to fit over the top of that. It goes all the way to the front of the V, so right where the nose comes together like this, there's like a little one inch gap where the, um, so what I did is I took plywood and laid it across this to see how or, well, I measured the width of plywood, which I can't remember for the life of me right now. Uh, four, you know, four foot by eight foot piece of plywood. So four feet hung over here and stopped with a gap about that big all the way up front. And you'll see that in a second here. I'll go over that. Um, but to, to make you understand what I did is, so I took the narrower part of the plywood and I cut that shape out of it that way. So... So if you understand, like, for instance, this floor, which I'll get into more detail in a little bit here, um, this floor, this section goes underneath that seat, it's one piece goes underneath this seat, and ends right where that crack is, and I had to put a, a, a back piece in there because it wasn't long enough. So that's eight foot from there to up underneath that seat, about three inches, I believe. So... By doing that, that you know, that's one piece. But what I'm talking about for up here is, so it's four feet across this way, which doesn't cover four feet across this way. So I took the one piece of plywood and turned it sideways. So four feet across would be from here to there, and the eight foot was from side to side. So by cutting it out that way, it gave me the width I needed to fit tight all the way up and around that outside. And then here's that little gap I was talking about. I'll move this out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see it. I need to vacuum this thing out. But you can see it right there. There's duct tape and stuff holding wires. But there's a little gap right there. Which I wanted that gap. So these wires come from this trolling motor down in. And then so do I have... I have a cheap, this thing's like a 60 year old fish finder I found. Works fine for showing me the depth, fits on my trolling motor just fine so I can be just like all the guys with the 1800, 2500 Tarovas except I don't need that because I, I don't need that. <laughs> that works just fine. But like I said, if I could get one, I would take it. <laughs> so let me get back to what I was explaining with this though. Okay, so you understand how I got that all cut out there. And then all I did to mount it is I made brackets that fit on the inside of this, which I'll show you in a second here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. But I made brackets that fit up against the front of the seat that I can actually screw this piece of plywood right to along the front of the seat. So it's I have it screwed into the back of the seat here too, which I, I drilled little pilot holes um, first you know because it's a metal seat so i took a metal drill and drilled little pilot holes for my screws to fit into nicely but i went all the way along the back side of the seat but also all the way along the front side of the seat and then i used these right here these are i believe deck screws <laughs> and i did the same thing drilled pilot holes but those go all the way through from here through the uh through the wood all the way into the seat also so that's why this is Solid. That's why I can sit on this without worrying about falling it uh, falling over. But the downside is permanently mounted. The only thing I can do is take this screw and pop this up and off if I wanted to travel with it uh, long distance or something. I wanted to cover this without having this on here. But this kind of helps if you put a cover over the top of it because it creates a teepee to your motor, which keeps the water. So let me show you the inside of that. Okay, so these holes I cut inside this piece this template so I, I i cut that out first put it in here i measured from the sides 
side to side. So this would be centered. So what I did is I cut this out of it and shaved it down so that when it fits in there uh, with the carpet on top of it, it has a nice snug fit. And then I did it obviously so I could have a spot to put like my gear and whatnot. And then uh, let me get this out of here. So I built this little hanging shelf in here specifically for that battery. So what I do is I have alligator clamps on here and I have a little gap right here, a little extra gap so that when I shut this, as you can see, it shuts in there just fine, doesn't pinch the wires and shuts completely. So I can stick the battery inside here without having any troubles. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but so this is just, these are just supports so that when I'm putting pressure on the, uh, the hatch, I'm not busting through. But if you can see the second line, that's not the seat underneath. You can see how far away it is. That's a bracket I put all the way across from one side to the other and fastened to the front of the seat so that when I drilled into the top of it, it could support the weight and it would hold it in place. So kind of, it made the seat more rigid, if you understand what I'm saying. So let me close this. So I put that hatch in there, put this hatch in here. That's where my battery runs for that. So I just run a little 12 volt Bexlar battery or you know a little flasher battery in there and then that's really good for like, like I have my my rope to tie up and uh, my oil for my two stroke and stuff like that and then that's really well well braced out and I boxed it in so it's actually enclosed nothing can fall out of there and then uh, what I wanted to describe to you though so you have a really good understanding is so this is one piece and those were cut out of it and when I cut those out of it I put bracing across here and around here but that bracing goes from the front of the seat which is right here because I can tell by that screw so bracing goes from here across the seat this bracing goes here and then like an H here and then those go down to the front seat so that's more stabilization right there and then there's the bracket underneath it runs down so there's a, a sub H so there's a space and then there's another one down below that so it's got the pillar spots but then this right here has a diagonal one running there and one there it's because triangles are strong and the same thing on that side so underneath that if you can imagine there's two fingers of two by eights or two by eights two by twos because I wanted it really light so two by twos Two by twos, two by twos. Never use two by fours up on something like this because it would make it top heavy and it'd be horrible for you to be standing on. Okay, so that's the front deck. It's pretty simple. Um, the way the cutouts are for the braces over the seat. So what I basically did is I cheated in a sense and I used the front seat as my main power brace. So that's that's why it's still really strong up there. It's still hooked to the boat because of the brackets on the sides that are attached to the seat, which makes that one rigid beam up front. So that makes a nice tough front end. Now, as far as like the back here, I'll have to point this out in detail and hopefully you guys can get a visualization of it beforehand. I have a video, it's, a, it's just a little slideshow of like what the build is in here. I might even just throw that video in like in this section just so you guys can see what it is about but it's kind of grainy so you're better off just going and checking it out or i'll leave the link right up, up here somewhere <laughs> so um but i'm gonna i'm gonna go over this floor real quick with you guys so you guys get an understanding okay so obviously that front end right there would have been floating so if you can look at the angle of the v of the actual boat right here this part right here right in the middle and from like there to about 
I would say about halfway. That's about six inches off the bottom of the boat. So you lose a little of that storage because that's where the V is. But because of that, you, you also have a really hard time making a flat surface. So what I wanted to do is have flat ground from this seat to that seat, from that seat back to that seat, and I wanted it to be one continuous thing. So like I said, so I unbolted this, so it's got screws and bolts, and then I replaced those because they were a little corroded. But other than that, that's all I had to do. I unbolted that, pulled that out, and actually had a ratchet strap over the top of this before that and like pulled it together so that the boat didn't spread apart or anything. So it was easy, easy to put that seat back in. But I basically, up here in the front, this is all two by twos. So those little squares, those are two by two boards in there um, for the bracing up here. But because I spend most of my time back here because it's just me and that's usually where I'm fishing, down here there's two by fours so i think i ran two by twos here but two by fours down the middle of it as cross ribbing so it supported it nice and strong and then there's no flexation i can put all my weight back there and it's fine um it's not often you're standing up on this part usually i'm up on the front deck or i'm back there so we'll go over some other stuff now because the flooring basically watch that video like i said i'll have the link in the in the video here and you can kind of see what I did with it more in depth than what I'm able to explain okay so now that we're done describing the flooring which was the main part most people want to know what was going on with that um, some little odds and ends those are wall rod holders so normally they're like if you're putting a wall up like this they sit on your wall this way and you snap your rods into them like that so I put them there, and I was going to put the bottom over here, but what happens is your butts to the rods can be different lengths. So all I do is I hang the reels down in front of the seat, and the butts sit on top of here. And the first two in line right there, the longest ones, I could put like 8-foot rods in. But as you go that way, obviously, you lose room for length. So like my, my shorter rods go on that side. Which, if you're just starting out, I mean... Unless you get some musky rods that you wanted to throw in here, and then you just lay them across the whole thing anyways. So, But that's how that goes together. Now, this stuff, this is my LX-7. This is a ice fishing sonar, but it has an open water transducer, which is right there. And that is a big thing that I like to have on here. So having the ability to have this back there makes makes it so I can back troll for a while and do a bunch of different techniques that you normally couldn't do unless you had a, a nice decent screen here but you don't necessarily need one getting out on the water is usually good enough but we'll go over this I think this is also an 88 mercury um, yeah 88 mercury and it's a 25 horse so this boat max technical rating is 30 horsepower this motor right here, I believe, was kind of working when I bought it. So I got it for a really good deal, like super, super cheap. I took it in, had them do an overhaul on it, and once they fixed it, it, is, it was actually running so good that I didn't even need to bother thinking about buying a 30 horse. This boat will do 20 to 24 miles an hour, I think, with just me in it, um, which will get you around real good. So... Just a friendly tip to anybody starting out, if you can get a max horsepower for a good deal, save your money, wait, get the best motor for your boat. Because I always see guys out there, and I know it gets you out there, but if you had like a 5 horsepower on here, it would take you like 3 hours to fish like a 100 acre lake. <laughs> well, I mean to like go from one side to the other. But the next thing I want to go over with everybody, oh... Yeah, the next thing I wanted to go over with everybody is this little miracle of ingenuity right here. So, this is an anchor mate. I believe they still make them. It's got this little tension thing on here. You you pull it this way and it, you know, loosens the spool and then this, you know, cranks it up and down. Um, the best thing to do is just rip it out, but it's it runs along the length of the boat bolts up here and then what I did is I put this board on here so I can mount this to it 
and then I did it knowing that I had to have that. So I mounted this first, then this, then this. So it's kind of how it's all cluttered up there. But so the rope goes through there, comes down, and I have the anchor up here, but obviously you'd have it over the side. And you can raise and lower it yourself and you know, makes life a lot easier when you're by yourself. It's not electric, but there's no need to be fancy like that. And like I said, if your first this is your first boat, trust me, that'll be your best friend. So <laughs> and then another tip I always recommend is I think Okay, yeah, this is a river anchor, but it's only a 12. I thought it was like a 20, but either way, it's a good little anchor to have. So just for anybody that doesn't know already, obviously anybody that's been boating for a while might know this, but if you're just starting out, having a good heavy anchor, that one's like 25. It's definitely heavier. Um, having a good anchor up front and an, a good anchor in back with about 100 feet of rope on each one, this one's got easily 100 feet I think it's over 100 feet of rope on there will help you station and fish more efficiently than you would if you only had one anchor up front because that could drive you nuts so that's a good that's a good detail of how that all works so let's go on to the next modification okay so tackle box right This is one of my first tackle boxes. I've had it for like ever. I don't want to say how long. <laughs> um, it's now my battery box. My deep cycle battery that I ha that I buy from I believe Amazon fits right inside there. And I used to run uh, a Vexlar battery that fit right there for this because obviously it's a it's a a winter flasher or sonar. So I have it usually in a in a case for winter with my Vexlar battery or my fly flasher battery. And that fits in there but I don't have to do that anymore because I have a deep cycle that fits right there and then you're gonna wonder so there's all these wires you're like oh so what's all the electric electrical for that's a manual start there's no no power to this I like mechanical because battery operated things tend to just anything with electrical and motors doesn't <laughs> they can be headaches so keep it simple stay mechanical pull as hard as you can start it this, on the other hand, so this wire you see here, it, I believe it's uh, like speaker wire, runs through here, runs up this, and I made this, made it myself, real easy. It's the uh, LED lighting, so I use clear epoxy to hold that in place. Obviously, I zip tied it top and bottom before I did that, but I went around it nicely. That is extremely bright. And in order to fish at night, you have to have light in the back and in the front. Now I have the wires running to that that one in the back over here. And then I have them running out underneath this up front to that little light you've seen up front. It's about that big. Uh, that way you're all eagle and ready to go. And then I did the same thing back here. Th these are for the lights. And then uh, this is for my flasher right here. So... If I want to, if I want to just plug that in and leave the lights off, I don't have to have them attached to my battery. So that's that's a really big tip that I I like to give to people is repurpose stuff. Uh, I don't know how much a battery box is because I've had this box forever now, and I had it one day sitting around, and I was gonna throw it away, and I ended up changing my mind because I looked at it and was like, well, that's a pretty big box. If I take all the stuff out of it, what can I fit in there? And Obviously, it works really good for a battery box. Even locked shut. It's got little cubbies in front still. So, like, if I, I have little extra things sitting in there. I think I have a lighter and a knife for emergencies. But, yeah, that's the boat. Um, the biggest thing I got to say about boats like this is you got to make sure they don't leak. Because they have rivets, and if people didn't take care of them, a lot of times these are the ones that will have leaks around the rivets around the ribs because they abused it and you know that's something you always want to check into when you're buying a boat one other thing i wanted to do is i kind of showed you guys this it was in the cubby of the front of the boat but so obviously this is you know just a little carabiner clip but it's tied to about um okay what would i say 15 probably about 18 to 20 feet of rope so 
with a nice loop at the end that you can hold on to that doesn't slip. It's locked in place. But keep this wrapped up nice and neat. Um, but the point of this, so that everybody understands it, is that when you're launching a boat by yourself, it's very difficult to do it, I guess, smoothly. So if you're looking to, to get on uh, bodies of water by yourself and you want to get out, you know, have something like this with you at all times. Even if you don't have a casting deck, just, you know, put it in your, your stuff. But, well, that's that little light I was telling you about, so that's wired in. But this little ring right here is a lifesaver. So that clip clips right on there. And then you actually tie the one end of that to, oh, it's really hard to see. Um, so that's your crank, obviously, or your winch. What I do is I take that loop and I hook it right on here, make sure this is locked, uh, make sure the boat's all detached from the trailer. So when you're backing it in, um, basically what you'll do is you'll back in, hit your brakes, and the boat will go sliding off into the water. But because it's attached here and to your trailer, you can just slowly pull forward up onto the um, boat launch. And then once you get to the, the boat launch, stop, and the boat will actually beach itself right there. Uh, you get good at that, and you'll be able to launch a boat in under two minutes. Okay, guys, so hopefully that gives you guys a better understanding. And like I said, uh, I'll have that video. Well, what I'll do is I'll have it listed at the end of this video. So if you stay tuned to the very end, I'll have it so you can just click, uh, click the link if you missed it earlier in the video. But basically, I wanted to do this one for a while now because I, when I built the boat, I wasn't doing any YouTube stuff. I just took a video of it for my own, like, memory basically i can watch it and understand how to do it again so if i ever want to build another one i can so if you guys have any questions go ahead leave them in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if it helped you guys out let me know too also if you guys build one yourselves and you use any of the ideas that i had let me know i want to see those um i'm always fidgeting and fabricating and i really like to invent things like that and see other people's ideas so the minute you guys build something post a video and you can stick the links below. I'm not you know, against you guys sharing the links on my page like that. So let me know. And like I said, thanks again for watching. And remember to...